Hello students, welcome to a new series of science and technology. Today we will be starting with a very important but a very interesting topic that is of defense technologies. In this we will be seeing the various missile systems of India, aircraft and aircraft carriers, hypersonic missiles, then we will be seeing the various weapon systems such as artillery gun system. So let us start. So we will be starting with the missile systems of India, then we will be looking at the integrated missile development program, ballistic missiles of India, cruise missiles such as Nirbhay and Brahmos, then we will be looking at the India's missile defense system that is Indo and EXO missile defense system hypersonic missiles now they have acquired a lot of importance what are they how do they function we'll be looking at them aircraft carriers of Indian Navy submarines of India and then we'll be looking at the various fighter jets of India that is Rafale, Su-30, Tejas and then we'll be looking at the drone fleet of India now drones have acquired a lot of importance in battlefield so we'll be looking at them helicopters of India and other weapon systems such as artillery gun and various other guns so first let us deep dive into the first topic that is the missile systems of India. So let us start with missile systems of India. Now missile systems can be classified in various types. Okay, they can be classified on the basis of speed, range, operation or use. So first we'll be seeing on the basis of speed. So first will be subsonic. Now subsonic means the speed up till 0.99 Mac. So what is this Mac number? One may ask 0.99 Mac. Okay, so Mac number can be classified as Mac number. It is described as an aircraft or one may say aircraft. The better word would be object object speed compared with the speed of sound in air with Mac one equating to speed of sound that is 343 meter per second. So mathematically you can write speed of object speed of object divided by speed of sound. This is what your Mach number is with speed of sound being 343 meter per second. So this is what your Mach number is all about. Okay, this is your Mach number. So if some object has Mach number one, so if this is one, then its speed would be equals to speed of sound because speed of sound, let me write it here. So if this Mach number is one, so speed of object would be speed of object and this speed of sound is 343 so speed of object if you can see this will go here so we will cross multiply it so this will become 343 so speed of object will be 343 if the Mach number is 1 so subsonic is classified as the Mach number until 0.99 that is less than the sonic speed that is why it is called subsonic now second we have supersonic so in this the speed is from Mach 1 to Mach 5 and at last we have hypersonics in this the speed is greater than 5 Mac greater than 5 Mac so 0.99 Mac until 0.99 Mac it is subsonic then supersonic 1 to 5 Mac and then greater than 5 Mac it is hypersonic now this is based on speed second classification can be done on the based on their range okay how much is the range so range can be less than 1000 kilometer and these are known as short range missiles and these can be ballistic as well as cruise missiles these are short range missiles then we have medium range ballistic missiles that is less than 2500 km. Now you may see here that the short range missiles may be ballistic as well as cruise but from medium range missile we generally have ballistic. We generally have ballistic okay because cruise missiles have range in general less than 1000 km. So this may not be absolutely true but classification is done like that because we assume that cruise missiles are less than 1000 km and in most of the cases the cruise missiles are less than 1000 km because it is very hard to manufacture a cruise missile which has a range of more than 1000 km. So generally short range the cruise missiles are generally short range please remember this okay in general they are short range the long range missiles are mostly ballistic only. Okay, medium range ballistic less than 2500 km. Then we have intermediate range ballistic again less than 3500. And at last we have intercontinental that will be greater than 5000. Okay, so this is less than 3500, less than 2500, and then greater than 5000 km. So generally, the long range ones are ballistic, and cruise generally is short range. Ballistic can also be short range, but cruise generally is short range only. Okay, then third will be based on the mode of operation now what is mode of operation see this is land and you are firing a missile now this missile can go like this and can land on enemy territory on land only so you are fired from land and it went to land only this another way could be you fired from land and it went to air towards some aircraft in air so it can be from land to air also 
Another thing can be suppose there's this submarine. This is a submarine. Suppose this is some submarine here. Now this submarine, now this submarine can launch a missile from water to this land. It is launching from water to this land here. Now this is what from water to land. So these are the various modes of operation from air to air also possible from air. Suppose from one aircraft you are firing towards another aircraft from air to air. So these are the various modes of operation that how it how it operates or how do you shoot it. Okay, so let us see on the basis of mode of operation surface to surface means land to land. We may also call it land to land or surface to surface air to air from one enemy aircraft from one aircraft towards another aircraft that is from our aircraft to enemy aircraft surface to air. So from surface to air. Okay, so you are firing from surface towards enemy aircraft. Then submarine launched. Okay, you're launching from submarine. Now last is based on use. So these are of two types that is tactical and strategic. Now what does this mean? Tactical it is it has been written that it is used in war and strategic it is used to threaten. Now what do they mean? Actually, so let us see them. Okay, suppose you are here, you're on land. And this is an enemy aircraft here. This is an enemy aircraft here. And a war is happening. Okay, and a war is happening. And suppose this distance is say 25 kilometer. So the aircraft is 25 kilometer away from you. And you will fire some missile, you will fire some missile towards this aircraft to save yourself or to destroy this aircraft. Now these missiles which are used in war, okay, which may be actually used in war to destroy enemy or to gain some kind of advantage, those are used as tactical missiles. Those are known as tactical missiles, which are generally used in war. So to defeat enemy. Okay, why? Because they form the they form the core of our tactics. Okay, we decide our tactics with them that which missile we will be using. Okay, which missile will you use for offensive, which missile will be using for defensive. So they form the part of our tactics. But what do we mean by strategic then? So strategic suppose this is city one or country one. This is city or country one. And then we have country two or city two. So I'm just writing country two here. This is country two. So now what will happen is that this country one has some missile which can go say from 3000 to 5000 kilometer to 5000 kilometer from 3000 to 5000 kilometer it can go and it can hit any part of country too. And generally these missiles the strategic ones are long range and they are also nuclear capable at the same time. Nuclear capable. So these are used to threaten enemy that I can attack you anywhere you are not safe anywhere and if the push comes to shove i will use this missiles and i will destroy you also so these generally have a concept of mutually assured destruction mad with them that i will also destroy you if i am getting destroyed so these are generally nuclear capable long range and have mutually assured destruction so they are used to alter strategy of the war Okay, they are used to alter strategy or decide strategy because now suppose now Pakistan is in now Pakistan is nuclear capable. So India will have to alter its strategy. If India and Pakistan now go to war earlier, the strategy was different when Pakistan was not nuclear capable. But now since Pakistan is nuclear capable, India will have to alter its strategy to tackle Pakistan. Similarly, the case with India and China. China went nuclear, but India was not nuclear. India went nuclear after some time when China went nuclear. So India also went nuclear. Now China will have to alter its strategy to counter India because now India is nuclear capable and now it has missiles which can go from 3000 to 5000 kilometer. So China will alter its strategy that how it will tackle India. So that is why they are called strategic missiles and they are used to threaten the enemy that I will destroy you. Please don't try to hit me. Okay, so if this is clear, let us move ahead. The missile systems, there are two that is cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. So what are they? Let us look them one by one. So the cruise missiles are guided towards a preset land based target using a navigation system. Please remember this that they use a navigation system. 
Ballistic missiles are more or less a projectile shot up in atmosphere. Now, what does these two lines mean? It will become clear from this diagram. Suppose this is a cruise missile. Okay. Now, cruise missile has a navigation system with it. So, how it will travel? It will travel in this path, like this. Okay. And it will go and hit the target. So, it traveled like this path. Okay. So, it had a navigation system. That is why it was able to navigate up. It was able to go down and then hit the target. So, cruise missile, what are they? They are able to change their path. They are able to change their path and they fly very low. Okay, they fly very low near the ground. They fly very low near the ground so that they remain undetected. They remain undetected. So to remain undetected, they fly very low or close to ground. And they have a navigation system which allows them to fly very close to ground and to maneuver. Okay, they can easily maneuver left, right, up, down like this. They can maneuver in any direction. And preset means they have a predefined target where they have to hit and land based target. Okay, they target a land based target which is preset and have a navigation system so they can go up, down and navigate like we saw here, this path. Now let us see what, is, what are ballistic missiles then and what is the difference. So this was for cruise. Now let us see for ballistic. So ballistic what it will do, it will just go like this as you saw. So it will go in a projectile shot. It will go up first and due to gravity of the earth, it will come down like this. So This is the basic difference in ballistic and cruise missile. That ballistic missiles are shot up and due to gravity they come down. They do not have generally a proper navigation system. Okay, but cruise missiles have. So generally what happens is that due to this design, these ballistic missiles are cheaper. And cruise missiles are more costlier because they are more complex. As you can see from here, from the path, you can see here that these will be more costlier because these are more complex. Okay, but what is the profit of having a cruise missile? So cruise missiles are not easy to intercept. They cannot be intercepted easily. Okay, so I'm making this cross here cannot be intercepted. These one. Okay, but these one are easier to intercept. So these are easier to intercept because the path is fixed so you can see and you can take countermeasures to stop it because once you know the trajectory that in which trajectory it is traveling you can try up to some extent that how to stop it but its trajectory the cruise missile trajectory is very hard to predict and it is very hard to stop okay so this is the difference now we'll be seeing them one by one i hope you understood it what is the difference between cruise and ballistic missile how do they travel so low altitude flight as I was saying and a very high mobility is there for cruise missile. High altitude flight where it uses gravity of earth and thus traces a parabolic path. So high altitude flight and low mobility for ballistic one and for cruise low altitude flight and high mobility. It uses gravity and forms parabolic path, the ballistic missile. Short ranges, so as I was saying that generally the cruise missiles are of short range because it is very hard to manufacture such a complex missile as I was saying, which can maneuver, which can lie low for very long range. So these are generally short range as you can, we'll be studying that Brahmos, this is the range. Now we are making a new Brahmos version, but initial Brahmos version was this and nearby is up to this. Okay. And these are long range. They can be up to, they can be more than 1000 also. The latest one, Agni 5 that we have is up to 5000 kilometers. Okay. So they can be long range from 1000 to 5000, any range. Okay. So these can be both short plus as well as long range, but the ballistic can be short and long road range both, but to manufacture a cruise missile, which is of long range, it becomes very difficult. So ballistics can be both short and long range. The more difference cruise missiles are hard to intercept due to high maneuverability. As I was saying, they are hard to intercept. They are easy to intercept due to predictable path because you can predict the path of ballistic missiles. High precision due to navigation system, they generally have low precision, but nowadays due to advancement in technology, high precision ballistic missiles are also being manufactured by various countries, including India. Suitable for firing conventional warheads, they are suitable for firing nuclear warheads. 
okay though it is not hard and fast you can even fire a nuclear warhead from a cruise missile there is no hard and fast route but since i have to tell you difference so these are general difference okay these are general uh, things general points there can be exceptions all right this is not 100% to every time you can have a long reach cruise missile also but generally it is not made so i'm just telling you general points i hope this is clear so now we are done with missile systems now let us look at the integrated missile development program igmp so let us dive deep into this so integrated um, integrated guided missile development program this was the brainchild of our former president shri apj abdul kalam now let us look at it why was it and why it was necessary and what was its importance so see what was happening is that due to due to large development of missile all over the world be it from usa be it from china be it from ussr and other countries india felt india felt that it also needs a big arsenal of missiles india also need missiles okay which can help india to protect its border to protect itself it needed missiles which can uh, attack either china or pakistan or any other country now to manufacture this missile it was very tough task why it was very tough task because no other country will provide you the technology to manufacture these missiles they will not share anything with you so india had to start from scratch the only help india got was from its space program okay so the only help we got was from our space program that is via isro so if you study it in detail you will see that this space program and this missile program went hand in hand because no one was sharing technology with us foreign players were not sharing technology with us so we had to develop it ourselves and that is why for developing this this program was brought ig mdp this program was bought so to develop our own missiles okay and this was the brain child of apj abdul kalam he was the head of this okay so it is ministry of defense program for research and development r and d research and development of comprehensive range of missiles so different different kinds of missile you will be seeing there are five different missiles under this you will be seeing the program was managed by drdo it was managed by drdo it started in year 1982-83 under the leadership of Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, who saw its ending in 2008, and it was ended in 2008 because it fulfilled its various objective. And due to this, five major missiles, which now form the backbone of missile development of India, were produced, manufactured, researched, and developed, designed. You may say anything. Okay, were designed, developed, and manufactured. So these five projects under I. G. M. P. can be remembered as Patna. Okay, P is for Prithvi. A is for Akash, T is for Trishul, N is for Nag, and A is for Agni. These are the five missiles. But now you can remember like this. First is Prithvi. This was surface-to-surface -surface missile. We'll be studying about this in very detail. I'm just giving you a brief explanation here. We'll be seeing them in detail. Akash was surface-to-air missile. So this is what this is an anti-aircraft missile. This is used to this is anti-aircraft. This is used to shoot down aircraft from surface. Okay, Trishul. This is again a surface-to-air missile, but this acted as a technology demonstrator. Why technology demonstrator? Because by the time Trishul was made, it was designed and manufactured. Uh, the requirements for army had changed. The requirements for the forces had changed drastically, and that is why it was just used as a technology demonstrator, and then it was. used as a base to make other missiles so that is why you will not see trishul in production but you will see prithvi and akash in production because trishul was used as a technology demonstrator why because by the time trishul was produced it it did not fulfill fulfill the requirements of the forces so forces asked for more so what drdo did was that it said ki we will use it as only a technology demonstrator and then we will use it to we'll use it as a base to make new missiles okay so all the technology developed in trishul was put into other missiles which we will seeing that which missiles have been produced with the help of trishul but this was also surface to air missile nag this is anti tank missile so this is used to blast tanks okay in the battlefield this is a short range missile please remember 
ओके जनरली एंटी टैंक मिसाइल्स आर शॉर्ट रेंज से फ्रॉम वन टू थ्री किलोमीटर्स ओके तो दिस इज द मैक्सिमम रेंज फ्रॉम वन किलोमीटर टू थर्टी किलोमीटर द मिनिमम रेंज कैन बी ऑफ अप टिल फिफ्टी मीटर्स जनरली ओके यू कैन शूट फ्रॉम फिफ्टी मीटर्स समटाइम्स इट मे गो वेरी लेस इट मे इवन बिकम ट्वेंटी मीटर मिनिमम रेंज एंड देन अग्नि दिस इज अगेन अ सर्फेस टू सर्फेस मिसाइल तो एज यू आर सींग दैट दिस पृथ्वी इज ऑल्सो सर्फेस टू सर्फेस दिस अग्नि इज ऑल्सो सर्फेस टू सर्फेस देन बोथ दिस आर बोथ दिस आर दिस त्रिशूल एंड आकाश आर सर्फेस टू एयर सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दैम ओके वाई टू मिसाइल्स देन वाई पृथ्वी एंड अग्नि फॉर सर्फेस टू सर्फेस वाई आकाश एंड त्रिशूल फॉर सर्फेस टू एयर दिस विल बी सींग ओके वन बाय वन वेन वी स्टडी दैम इन डिटेल वाई डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ मिसाइल बट प्लीज रिमेंबर राइट नाउ दैट अंडर पटना okay under igmdp that is patna missiles were developed and these are the five missiles we'll be studying them in detail okay so now let us see the various ballistic missiles of india okay we have completed this and now we'll be studying why different missiles okay even for the same operation for surface to surface why we have so many different missiles so in ballistic missiles of india first let us see their classification Okay, what are the various ballistic missiles? First is surface to surface. So in this we have short range one. So the short range one, the first missile that started with this was Prithvi. Okay, so Prithvi one, two, and three these were the base missiles which were made in India. Okay, the Prithvi one was a very short range one. It was a very short range one. Then subsequently for Prithvi two and three the ranges were increased. Okay, then comes Dhanush. So this was the naval version. Okay, this was naval version of Prithvi. Naval version of this missile only was used for navy. Okay, then we have Shauri. This is a very important missile. This is hypersonic missile, hypersonic missile, and this is a canister launched. I will be telling you what canister means. So this is a canister launched missile. Okay, then we had Prahar missile. Now, what is this? prahar missile okay one may ask so prahar missile is a quick reaction missile this is a quick reaction missile quick reaction missile now what does it do suppose you are in a battle okay so prahar missile helps the army in case of battle to fire at a very short period of time one prahar missile can be fired in time span of 3 to 4 minutes and these have been developed for range up to 150 kilometers so up till 150 km you have a missile which can be fired very rapidly within 3 to 4 minutes so this provides support to the army when it is moving forward in a hostile territory okay so this is what prahar was made a missile which can go up to 150 km and which can be fired in a very short time then we have agni one now these agni are were developed because they were nuclear capable even though prithvi are also nuclear capable that these are very short range agni was developed for medium medium range and so to evolve it towards a missile which can become intercontinental intercontinental missile so prithvi was not developed prithvi was generally developed for short range okay up until less than 1000 km agni was developed so to make missiles which can go more than 1000 3000 5000 km and that is why you will see nowadays agni 5 can go more than 5000 km and now we are developing agni 6 also so agni series was developed so to give india a new series which can go up till very long range prithvi series was there though both i was saying as i was saying that both are surface to surface but both have a different role agni series to give a very long range prithvi short range okay that is the difference so these are the short range missiles and last one is pranash so pranash is a upgraded version of prahar which forces want because now forces want more range this is prahar missile upgraded 
अपग्रेडेड विथ मोर रेंज तो दिस कंप्लीट अवर शॉर्ट रेंज वंस एंड एट लास्ट वी हैव प्रलय सो विल बी सींग ऑल ऑफ दिस सो प्रलय इज क्वाजी बलिस्टिक मिसाइल क्वाजी बलिस्टिक मिसाइल This is quasi ballistic means it is a ballistic missile as I was saying you ballistic has a path like this, but this pralay though has a ballistic path but it can maneuver little bit okay this can do like this in its path up down and a little left right it can go so this is quasi ballistic this is not totally ballistic but it can maneuver in its path so this is pralay missile. Now let us look at the intermediate ones so I hope you understood the short range ones so intermediate ones we have agni two. Now these Agni two, Agni three, and Agni four were made to increase the range of missile, so that we can go from one thousand, two thousand, three thousand like this. So these were the intermediate. That is why I was saying that Agni series was developed. And when you will see that after this, you will have Agni prime. Now this is a very important missile in the missile history of India, because for the first time we had MIRV capability. Now what is MIRV? I will be telling you in detail, but for now let us understand that this is a missile which is being fired. Now this missile goes up in the air, and then this missile releases four or five different warheads. Earlier, what used to happen was that earlier this missile went like this, like this, like this, and it hitted the target. This was what used to have earlier. But now what will happen with this Agni Prime? It is MIRV capable, so it will. release different different warheads once it reaches the height it releases four five different warhead so what will happen is that these warheads will hit different areas one will hit here one will hit here one will hit here so it becomes very hard for enemy to intercept it earlier what used to happen that since it is only one missile so it can intercept you easily now since this is multiple okay this is multiple reentry vehicle okay mirf multiple reentry vehicle so there are multiple vehicles there that is why it becomes hard for them to intercept and that is why it becomes very important for india we'll be studying about this in detail what is mirf etc but please remember this i'm telling you in brief right now and then we have intercontinental one so in this we have agni 6 which we have developed and uh, agni 5 which we have developed and agni 6 this is under development so as you can see agni series the range is increasing from agni 1 was short range then agni 4 until intermediate range and then agni 5 and agni 6 are intercontinental that is why we have agni series and then we have shorya so these are the different missiles okay on surface to surface and then we have submarine launched one so these are from land launch land based these are all land based here until and then we have submarine launch k15 k4 k5 k6 we'll be studying them in detail okay just understand right now that these are launched from submarine and some of these are also nuclear capable now we have short range surface to air missile so surface to air missiles are generally used to protect from aircraft drones etc because they are fired from surface towards air they are used to protect yourself from various aircraft drones and other things okay these are also used to protect against the incoming missiles so if incoming missile is coming say this missile is incoming so we will launch a surface to air missile so to protect yourself Okay, so they are also used to protect against missiles. Also, remember this. So first is Trishul, which was used as a technology demonstrator. As I told you, this was used as a technology demonstrator. Then we had Akash. Now this is a point defense. This is a point defense missile. So this is what it is used to do. What it use? What it uses? This missile is used to protect various airfields of Indian Air Force. Airfields of Indian Air Force. So suppose if I have an Akash missile system here, and if some aircraft or some missile is coming, this is an incoming aircraft or missile. Aircraft or missile is coming. So I will launch an Akash missile to protect this airfield. So this is used for point defense. If you have a certain point or certain small area which you want to protect from incoming aircraft missiles, so you will use Akash missile. This is a point defense missile. Then we have Maitri. This is generally for low flying aerial targets low flying aerial targets such as helicopters helicopters and UAVs which are low flying in nature this is maitri which we have developed maitri okay then we have revti this is the naval version of maitri this is used by navy 
and then we have Rohini. This is the Air Force version. We'll be seeing them in detail. I'm just telling about them in brief right now. Okay. So, and then we have Barak 8. This we have developed with the help of Israel. Okay. This is again used for point defense generally. Point defense. But this is used for point defense for naval assets. For naval assets. Okay. Naval assets means these are used by ship. This Akash is used on surface generally. This is used on surface. This is also point defense, but this is for surface points or surface when you have to protect something in land. This is generally used in naval assets when you have to protect something in water. And then we have Igla S. Okay, this is man portable. That is, this can be held by a person. This can be held by man. So this is man portable. This can be held by a man or a person. So these are surface to air. Then we have air to air. So there's only one missile air to air which has been developed in India. That is Astra. Currently we are producing Astra Mark 1. But we'll be shortly producing Astra Mark 2 and Mark 3 also. This is air to air means this is fire from one aircraft. From one aircraft to another aircraft. So this is air to air. This is a very big achievement for India. India is one of the few countries which has been able to produce its own air to air missile. That is Astra. And at last we have anti-tank guided missile. These are used to burst various tanks. Nag. This is Nag is surface launched. Okay. So you uh, launch from surface towards a tank. Then we have spike again surface launch. This is a foreign missile. Milan again a foreign missile. And then we have Spice 2000. This is a bomb used by aircrafts. Okay, so I hope this is clear, this brief classification. So in next lecture, we'll be starting with the various surface to surface missiles that we have. That is short range ballistic missile. We'll be starting with Prithvi 1, then Prithvi 2, Prithvi 3, we'll be seeing. So I'm finishing this lecture uh, till here. I hope everything's clear to you. So very thank you for this lecture.